forgot what I was doing for a second. <laughs> but I, I, I remember it halfway through. Completely it's a, zoned out. It's okay. We got a guest on today. No, we don't. No, you don't. Yeah, we do. It's Alex Jones. Welcome to the podcast, Alex. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'm tired of here. <laughs> Dude, Kurt's definitely going to watch this one. Oh, yeah, he definitely is. I actually didn't know that I was coming on today. If I'd known that before, like, two hours ago, I was going to start, like, writing down stuff that Kurt said on the last podcast just so I can, like, remind everyone why they're not correct. I mean, we can just, like, go back and, and listen to no, it no, in, in no, real no. time. I actually kind of want to be on a podcast with him so we can just both talk about that his, would be fantastic. his point of view, my point of view. I actually think I should just do a DMT trip with him so I can finally find the elves. Meet the elves? Would you Would you actually try DMT? No, I'm afraid of it. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about this actually in the elevator today. Like, the idea is, like, at least from what I understand, like, you could live an entire life, right, in, an, in, a, in the 15-minute DMT trip. Like, it's, like, an extremely long experience. Yeah. So, like, we were talking about this in the elevator. What if you did DMT in your DMT trip? Inception. That's, okay. what, that's what I'm saying. That's a DMT inception. And I was saying, like, there's going to be a point in time, like, we are in a simulation, but then we can go a little deeper into the simulation because, like, you could live an entire lifetime in five minutes. You could practically live forever. Exactly. And that's what DMT does to you, man. But mm-hmm. you won't know until you know. Can we get a DMT trip right now? What? I, I think I, it's your DMT trip, Brent, to be honest with you. And y'all are all just living in it. Excited to be here on the podcast and in your trip. And my DMT trip. <laughs> yeah. The one DMT trip where I'm just doing a podcast. I got offered DMT one time. I was like, I'm a pass. I'm only a sophomore in high school. It was that long ago? <laughs> yeah, it was a long. Uh, one of my plugs, I was picking up like an eighth of weed or something like that. And he's like, oh, you need DMT? I was like, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a, wait, so he thought that you were going to graduate from weed straight to DMT? <laughs> Straight to DMT. Yeah. Apparently, it's like the hardest thing. Even though it's only like 15, 20 minutes, it's like the hardest high out of any high. And it's just... Like, like I said, you won't know until you know. Yeah. Have you ever heard of like ayahuasca? I've heard of it. Yeah. I feel like Rogan has talked about that, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't it's, know either. It's like a natural like hallucinogenic. It's what the Native Americans used to do a long time ago. My friend Hugh actually tried it. He said it was fucking cool. Really? Yeah. He was been on, he was been on the podcast. He's been a guest. Yeah, I'll have to ask him about it. How many guests have you had so far? Like ten? No. Um, Henry, David, you, Kurt twice. Anyone else? Well, you said you said Brett. Yeah, yeah, yeah Brett. Brett. So Brett. five different people, six episodes of guests. Did you talk about? The Brett story on the podcast. I don't think I, if you have, I did not hear it. The Brett story or the Kurt story? Well, the Kurt story you did talk about because I was on yesterday's. That did was, you talk about, that was Friday. Did you talk about Brett at Buford's? Uh, no. Is that one we are willing to talk about? We, we, I'm I mean, wi- I'm willing to hear it. That's for sure. We can, we're going to have to scrub. <laughs> we're going to scrub five minutes on the podcast. Uh, so you can tell Major what this is about. I mean, it's it's something bad. I mean, he just had a really good time at Buford. It's so, it's not bad. No, no, it's not bad. So, I think it's impressive. I think it's like a good it, honestly, it was thoroughly impressive. So, <laughs> at, there's a drink that you can get called an Adios, or an, an Adios motherfucker, and it's yeah. it's a, a like five shots in a 16 ounce cup, and they like it's like five shots, and then they put blue Curacao. yeah something and then more alcohol on top so it's and then she also put like sprite yeah sprite and, so uh, basically you else. have one audio motherfucker and you're good for the night pretty much that's the you idea <laughs> so he orders the drink we're sitting at the bar together this was at the uh well it's worth noting that he hadn't actually had a drink until then like we had been drinking i think i'd had two beers you might have had two beers by that point yeah and he had not started. I thought he wasn't drinking that night. Yeah, no, I, he played catch up. I thought he he wasn't going to either. I was like, hey, you know, Brett, you want a beer? He's like, no, I'm good. And then we got to about halftime at the football or the Arkansas game, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do one. But then he decided he was gonna do one too. That is not. That is not the. Is that not what that happened? That's not what happened. I thought. I thought I had one first. No. Oh, he had one first. He. So we had to hunt. Clearly, around. that had an effect on me. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> we had to hunt around for a spot at Buford's for a while because there were tons of people there. Way too many Alabama fans. You oh, that? Yeah, there's a lot of people there from Alabama. Some sort of event for them or something. Maybe. I don't know. So we had to hunt around for these spot, spots. We finally found some seats together, sat down, 
and we're watching the game. It's like probably sat down like right around the second quarter beginning. And I still have like my old beer. You still have your old beer. And Brett is getting to know, talking to this bartender. Who, mm-hmm. He was, he was nice. Very flirtatious. Very flirtatious bartender. Very nice though. Good marketing and, scheme. Uh, yeah. Well, she was only flirting with Brant, so I don't know about that. <laughs> she was flirting with Brett, too. Yeah, kind of. I'll give you that. So they're talking and talking, and he looks at her, and he's like, do you know how to make an adios, motherfucker? And she goes, she looks at him, rolls her eyes to the back of her head. She's like, oh, my God. And so she makes him one, and he's drinking it and whatnot. And no, no, like, no, no. He takes it, like, two straws and no, downs. No, no, no. This wasn't the first. No, not the first that, one. Oh, oh, that was. Okay. He's had. Multiple. It's like, we'll, I know, okay. we'll get that. We'll get that. Okay, okay. He's drinking it, and then as he's drinking it, he's trying to get you to drink one. And I can't remember the exact order of the events from here because I can't oh, remember yeah. if he then said to like those random two guys to order one or not. But no, I remember, yeah. I do remember that <laughs> he bets you that if UT does not score. I said half, I was willing to make that bet. Exactly. So if you, he said if UT does not score by the half, you have to order one. Okay. Yeah, obviously, UT didn't score. You had to order one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think at that point he he ordered another one. No, no. What happened was I get the drink and there's a little ant floating in it, and I tell the bartender, "I was like, there's an ant in this one." And she's like, "You're being such a wussy," and she makes me an entire another one for free. So now I have two of them <laughs> sitting in front of me, and then Brett finishes his, and I forget. I think it was right before we left. He had another one. No, he had four. He had four audios. Um, I, was, I thought he had maybe, two, maybe three and a half. No, because. He, you might not have been here for this, actually. You might have gone off to go and, and uh, I don't know where you went, but. Socializing. Yeah. So we were at the bar. Do you remember when he got challenged to, we timed him to see how fast he could drink one of those? That's what it was. You wanted to time him. I didn't want to time him. I don't know who decided to want to time him because I was watching. I, th- I guarantee you, he, he, he offered. He's like, who wants to time me? I feel <laughs> it like- was probably that. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> he might have been timing himself. <laughs> so he times himself. He drinks. And we've already talked about how much alcohol is in this. He kills the entire thing in, I think, less than 10 seconds the first time. Oh my God. Just The slurps. whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing. And so, I mean, even if it wasn't as strong as it was, drinking alcohol like that quickly, like, yeah. it can, it'll have an effect. Brutal. Murders it. And then these guys come along. Maybe, yeah, you weren't here for this. Was no, I think I remember, like, like uh, Brett offered, like, oh, y'all, y'all should get one of these. Well, then they come along, they order them. They leave for oh a while. Gosh, and then they forgot about this. Yes, and then they come back. And he's talking to him. He's having a good time, obviously, because he's he just yeah he's enjoying himself. And um, I like Brett, by the way. He's a really great guy. Just yeah, no, no. Awesome. Just want to say, get that out there. Yeah, yeah I no, get that out there. no problems no whatsoever. Just, yes, I'm really great this. time. Just okay. storytelling. Yes, just storytelling. So he um, <laughs> these guys come back. They have not even. They've gotten like maybe, I mean, you can see major like this far down on their drinks. And like the drinks like pretty big. Yeah, and they barely drank. They, it. they probably had like a third of it max. And he's already been two in. So they ordered the drink after Brett convinced them to get one. Correct. And they're like, we don't like it. And they, they, did, they did not like it. He's already two. And he goes, I can drink one of these. And you guys are still drinking yours. And I can drink one of these in like eight seconds. And they were like, no, you can't. You can't do that. He was like, yeah, I can. Orders another one. And he says, if I drink this, like you have to pay me 20 bucks or something. And there goes, like, all right, fine. And then the guy's like, actually, actually, no, 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 10, 10. He's like, okay. Um, which would not have paid for the drink, which I think was the point. I think the drink was $10. No, the drink was 15 Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, guy's timing him. Brett kills it again in eight seconds. And the guy get, hands him 10, and then the bartender doesn't even charge him. <laughs> <laughs> and he was fine after that. And then we went back to our place. He, yeah, he was doing just fine. And then he blew up Max's bathroom. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I picked y'all up. I do remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, and then we talked about Def Leppard, didn't we? Yeah, we talked about that. Concert. Oh yeah, because they're having a concert. Right Motley Crue and Def Leppard are going to be touring together. I was actually looking at tickets last night. I looked at them like the night y'all talked about it. They're, they're like like good tickets are like 150 bucks. Yeah, they're anywhere like obviously they'll go up super expensive, but anywhere between like 80 to 100. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to go. Too. I'm going. Anyways, but no, we had a great time. It was a that was funny. That, See, that was a great time. It was a fun night. The one thing about concerts, like that's in a stadium. It's in the Alamo Dome. And there's also one in Houston at Minute Maid Park. That's the, the thing I don't. I would get. go to Minute Maid Park. Yeah, that that would be cool. But I feel like the juice box. if you're in like a concert and you have to sit in your seat the whole time. I mean, obviously you can stand up, but I feel like the the point of a concert is to just be as close as you can and just like yeah and like close. But 
I don't know how I could listen to Motley Crue live sitting in my seat just like, woo Would you have to just sit there? No, you can. I'm yeah. sure you can stand up. But yeah. Leaning over the rail. And yeah. Woo. But anyways, um, we didn't even do Bear Fact. Yeah, I know. I was going to say that. Okay. Well. Here we go. Let's get that out there. So our today's bear fact is the spectacled bear is the only bear native to South America. It is a mountain bear. It lives in the Andes. It's a good looking bear. The spectacle bear? Spectacled. Spectacled. Oh, is it because it kind of looks like it has glasses? <laughs> a monocle? No, look at it. Look it up, Brent. Oh, yeah, look it up. Let me see. Kind of looks like it has like goggles on a little bit. Oh, it does. I don't know if that's why, but spectacled. Spectacled bear. Yeah. Very cool. In it. Isn't it cool? Tuesday. Tuesday. Cool to tea. Man, so much to talk about. It's a shame you didn't ever meet Max's parents. I know. I really should have. I mean, they sound like wonderful people. It's just uh, funny you know. because you would know better, but Max, our plush brother, he comes from really English, a really English background, but he sounds nothing like someone who's English. I mean, like no accent whatsoever. He just sounds in Oklahoma. That's why. I was from Houston. Well, he's from Houston, but he like grew up in Oklahoma. Yeah, so Tulsa. It's just it's crazy just hearing what his parents would sound like, and then just listening to Max. I mean, they I mean, Max sounds like me. It's just kind of flat, monotone, and then his parents are like Tuesday. <laughs> Imagine yeah. if you could get a vasectomy that was like a light switch. You could just like turn your balls on and off. Dude, that's the future, man. That's, that's the future. That's You're, a you go neural link. Go cheat on your wife and just turn your balls off. <laughs> she gets back and she's like, hey, why are your fucking balls off? Oh, um, uh, uh, it's important to me to keep them off. <laughs> Always keep your balls off. I mean, that's kind of, you, you've ever heard of those porn stars that like the men have to get like a surgery to like inflate their penis because they can't get hard, even medically, like even with like medication anymore. I've never heard of that. I mean, yeah, it's serious I mean, ED. Yeah, it's like maximum like, ED. Like, they have had so much sex, they can't get hard anymore. Yeah, like, Cialis yeah, stops working. <laughs> <laughs> Viagra just did not work. It doesn't do it for you anymore. Well, actually, you can't have Viagra because it's made by Pfizer. Oh, yeah, and they're uh, against the law now. Yeah. Wait, what? Viagra is illegal? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that, because for some reason, who was saying that? Was that Kurt? Kurt, Max will say it. Can't have Viagra because it's made by Pfizer. Pfizer, yeah. Can't trust him. Definitely one of the most well-tested drugs, I think, in history. Yeah. Especially by men 40 and over. Yeah. That'd be like a hard thing to admit you have. I got ED. 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 Yeah. I, feel like, I don't understand why people care so much. Like, if I did, I'd be like, yep, I do. I can't get a boner. Like, it's like, it's like. <laughs> Sorry. Gotta use medication. It's like having male, what is it? Pattern ball. Yeah, ma- male pattern ball. It's like, you can't hide it. I mean, you could hide yeah, the ED. You, you can hide the small penis. But then, sure. like, but then it's like, yep, that's just. The cards I was dealt. What am I? Do, what am I going to do about it? Get a pussy. <laughs> that is an option. <laughs> what was that conversation we were having last night about the fish? Um, the river monster fish. Oh, the one that like swims up your your pee hole. Yeah, because it like senses the urea in the in the water. Yeah, I've heard about this. Yeah, but is that, was I the only one that thought like that fish has got to be like a sniper? Like, there's no. Like how that's a very precise to swim up a thin P of stream. But then, it, like, it, like they were. Well, I don't think it's that because I think that the 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 what was it the it wasn't the simulation. It was like a reenactment. Reenactment. Like it looks like the the fish jumps out of the water, like swims up the P stream, and then into the guy's penis. It was a very small. It's I mean, it's like, like it was like this big. But it was like that big around, like yeah, the size of like a dime. Like that's not. I don't know about y'all, but mine. And then it got like my, spikes on it and. Mm. My urethra is not that big, so I do not understand how. That, <laughs> how I don't that think fits. anyone's is. I don't understand how the fish fits, to be honest with you. Well, that happens, and uh, the reason I knew about that is because it, it was on a thousand ways to die. That TV show. What was the worst? What was the, I? I thought that show was like totally real, and then I think I watched it when I was like eleven once, and one of the ways to die was like some dude got hit by a meteor. <laughs> it was like, this is not real. <laughs> hit by a meteor? Yeah, it was like hanging out by a pool and like a meteor goes through him. I was like, what? I, I remember a handful. There's one where a girl was practicing a blow job on a cucumber and she tripped and she basically gagged herself to death by like face planting with a cucumber in her mouth. 
Um, I never watched a thousand ways. I are y'all talking about like the TV show? The TV show? Yeah, yeah. a thousand ways to die. I might have seen it a little bit. One movie. I think it's before your time. Movie series that fucked me up. I couldn't go near an elevator for so long after I watched Final Destination. I don't remember which oh, one yeah. it was, but yeah. someone got sucked into a um, not an elevator, an escalator. Oh yeah. Oh yes. I I can't. I escalators give me so much anxiety. I remember two more specific a thousand ways to die one where a guy was like doing a slip and slide in his backyard into his pool <laughs> with a like a, a tarp and there were nails that were like kind of sticking out of the middle of the tarp he like sliced his stomach open and died oh, there's another one where like a, a a uh mexican cartel like drug leader drug dealer was like he had a bunch of diamonds on his desk or something Okay. And then he they moved the diamonds because he was like, I don't know, looking at them or something. And then he did like a bunch of lines of coke thereafter. And then the little shards of diamonds were inside the coke and basically like lacerated his lungs and he bled to death. Oh my God. What I don't, I mean, like that, the, like that logic makes sense, but did does it? Does it? Uh, Snorting diamonds. Does it? Like, I mean, like little on. shards of diamonds. It's not going to do anything to you. Like people, like dip does the same thing to your lip and like doesn't. I mean, it's just like very, very small. Yeah, so it'll be the same thing. It's not big it's enough. Like, you can't bleed out from that. I mean, your lungs are very delicate. The one that I remember specifically from that show was this guy. He like throws a javelin and like when he like <laughs> ran to retrieve it, it like stabbed him through his eye and he died. <laughs> <laughs> that show is not real. Yeah. And then now like they're starting to come back to me now. There's another one where a guy literally with a syringe injected glow stick at a party into his veins. And so he had like, <laughs> he had like glow stick veins and obviously he died. I mean, what the hell are you doing? Uh, but he was cool for like He was really minutes. cool. Yeah, he was super cool for about five minutes. Guys, look. <laughs> My veins are glowing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you would want to do that. That's, an, that's the best pump you can get. I mean. the scariest? That's actually a good question for you, Brant. What? What's the scariest movie you've ever watched? The scariest movie? Yeah. Or maybe, maybe it doesn't even have to be the scariest. Maybe the one that like freaked you out the most. It could even just be like one that like conceptually is freaky the first time i watched the conjuring i honestly just for any horror movie when someone's possessed and they do that that demon crawl on all fours ugh. yeah i don't like that at all no i would say when i was a kid when i was younger the thing scared the absolute dog crap out of me 1982 the mm -hmm. thing john carpenter's i love that movie now i mean it's awesome but i i would literally like throw that movie in the woods because my brothers would play or ben would play not major but when i was young i watched alien with my dad and I didn't it's not think even it, that scary. I like, like I was like eight. It just freaked me out. I was scared of it, but not really. Like I knew it was scary, but it didn't. It didn't get me that bad. But I would say recently, like conceptually horror. I would say what would scare me most is psychological horror. Mm -hmm. And I would say recently it would be It Follows. It Follows is a is that very, the horror like like it's like the STD. Yeah, and, and then only you can see this person who's just yeah. following you. And then when it gets you, you're dead. I watched a video on like all the ways to beat it. It's an interesting video. Like in theory, there's a bunch of ways you could beat it, but then it kind of defeats the purpose of the movie. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You could, it, it is a very interesting, I think that one of the scariest things, and this isn't really like a horror movie. It's just conceptually is like black mirror. Never seen it. Is, seen parts of it. it. In this one episode, um, it was called uh, white Christmas. And as a part of the episode, this guy, he basically humans have like implants like in their eyes mm -hmm. and you like control it with like this little thing and you can control like what you can see a little bit, kind of like augmented reality. And in the episode, this guy gets into this like really end of the world argument with his girlfriend um, and she like blocks him and that blurs her image. For him to see like he no longer can like see her okay and after that he like sees her a couple years later with like a small blurred image which is her her kid right who he thinks is his and he spends i don't want to spoil the rest of the episode but it's like freaky to me because like the idea that you could be like that because you can't like hear them see them or anything like they're they're completely invisible to you or like they're blurred to you they're blurred it's very freaky huh I, I should probably watch Black Mirror. I've heard good things about it. There's a, a movie, you can find it on, I think, Hulu. It's called The Crazies. And it's just this movie about, um, like, the government 
kind of just they're trying to control the population, so they release um, basically a COVID. Co- a co- they basically release a COVID that makes you go insane. It, it was pretty crazy. The crazies, yeah. Have you all ever seen killer clowns from outer space? <laughs> Do you remember the clowns used to like the like the clown epidemic from like yep. 2016? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I asked Mitchell that question recently. I was like, "Are you scared of clowns?" No, I'd be scared of those clowns. Oh, Jacob, I got a good question for you. I asked this to Brant. I mean, we have different answers. Which one would be scarier? Someone, okay, let's say this person's 20 feet 20 away feet. from you across okay. across the room. Okay. Which one's scarier? A person sitting there holding a gun, pointing it at you, or that same person walking towards you slowly with a knife? It's probably, I mean, I, and this is actually backed up by, there's a couple studies about this. I think it's the knife. And I think Me that, too. I think that, Actually, I'm probably not going to say that on the podcast because it's a little edgy, these studies. But basically, the the end result was that, like, people who are being... Oh, no, actually, no. It was... Never mind. I forgot what it was about. It was about people getting mugged. And they were more willing to comply if they had a knife versus a gun. I don't know how significant it was because it was a while ago that I read this mm. or that I even heard about this. I may be misrem- misremembering it, but I believe that they were more likely to comply with the person who had a knife. Yeah, because I just, I feel like with the gun, you know how, if they're going to shoot you, there's one thing that's going to happen. Boom, they pull the trigger. But with the knife, there's so many opportunities for different outcomes. Yeah. It's just. I, I, I would still be more worried about the person with the gun. I can outrun the person with a knife. What if it's Usain Bolt holding a knife? You're fucked. You're done, kid. Okay. <laughs> so well, it's actually not a distance runner, so if you're like pretty. Yeah, so, okay. Let's, anything major. let's say LeBron James is standing in front of you with a knife. We're fucked. We that's <laughs> yeah, that's an fun. NFL tight end. Yeah, that's yeah. That's no go. <laughs> He's got stamina. He runs on a treadmill with less oxygen than normal. Yeah, he can go. Major, do you think the British monarchy should be abolished? <laughs> of course. Why do you think that? No, I don't actually think that. I mean, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. They're one of the few countries left with a monarchy. That is pretty cool. I don't, I don't know if they need to be abolished, but I think that maybe they don't need money from the government anymore. So, ha- they have their own independent wealth. They really don't need. Yeah. Okay, I didn't realize that the government pays them. Yeah, they do. It's like a, it's called like the. I mean, arguably, it's because they made a deal with them whenever they stepped back from power a long time ago that they would get a lump sum of money every year. You can look it up. It's called like the royal endowment, like the royal payment or something interesting but it's several hundred million pounds i believe really yeah i think like 200 sounds about right to me but i can't exactly remember mm. and they get paid every year so i don't think they need to be abolished they just should probably stop getting paid money because uh, i think they have enough they're quite useful institution though when you think about it like a monarchy yeah i mean but like a monarchy that actually isn't involved in like the actual running of the country they're very useful like diplomatically i think at least for the UK. Yeah. That's okay. Well, I'm glad you had a, a lot to say about that, Major. Um, hmm. Dude, don't get into politics, man. Well, I'll do I'll do one more. Major, how, how far should the First Amendment go? Like what are the what are the limits of the First Amendment? All the way. Is there anything that you can't say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's plenty of words I can't say. Well, okay. I just, I just need like <laughs> name them. <laughs> you won't. You right. <laughs> I I mean, the United States was kind of founded around the First Amendment. You know, the, oh, yeah. all of this idea of freedom. So I think, I mean, as time goes on, our First Amendment's getting slimmer and slimmer. But I think it should go all the way. I mean, it's supposed to be America, the land of the free, and whatever. But I saw this really funny tweet, and it's so true. If the United States saw what the United States was doing to the United States, the I, United States would invade the United States to liberate the United States for what the United States is doing to the United States. I think I, I – did I say that to you? I swear I, I said something like that recently. I, recently. I know I heard I think it. I, said it I, think, I think I said it to you, to Jacob. I, I heard it somewhere. Yeah, I think you heard it from me. But – Hopefully I didn't say on the podcast, but anyways, yeah, no, that's, there are some caveats to the First Amendment, even when it was created. 
can't slander people. No, uh, no, that of course. I don't think that. It, you mean like? Never mind. Never mind. And then like you can't there. threaten national security anyway. You can't threaten the president. No, yeah, you can't do that either. Nope. Well, I think the president threatening the president is also part of threatening national security. Yeah, I was just being specific. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think those are like really the only two things. No, there's a couple more. You can't. There's like ones where it's like you can't incite violence. Oh yeah, that, that's right. So you can't say like go punch this person. Right. And you also cannot yell like fire in a crowded theater. Right. That too. Which I think is a part of inciting violence, but or inciting panic. Panic. So would pulling a fire alarm be the same thing? Um. So. Yeah, I think you go to jail for doing that. I know a friend that during the star test one year, like junior year, we just fire alarm went off. We all went outside. And then like a year later, I was hanging out with that friend. And they were like, hey, I remember junior year during like the English star, whenever that fire alarm went off. I was like, yeah. He was like, look at this video. <laughs> <laughs> it was a video of him pulling the fire alarm. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Did you ever hear the rumor, and I don't know if it's even true, that like if you pull the fire alarm, it like puts like this like ink on your hands that they'll be able to like note notice. Well, what you can do, and I don't know the way that this is how it works. If it's if the fire alarm at the school is intelligent enough, and I would say that it is because of how big of a building it is and how big their budget is, you can ad- address each individual module on the fire alarm system. So you can figure out. What oh, time it was pulled. pulled, and then which one was pulled. And you go to the cameras. The camera. Yeah, and you go to the camera and see who pulled it. Yeah, that makes way more sense than the hand. Yeah. I think I heard sounds that in like, like middle school. Sounds like a cash deposit box. You know, bank robbers, they steal the cash deposit boxes, and they're they're rigged with, like, ink explosives. So, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if yeah. robbers steal yeah. a cash deposit box and don't disarm it, all that money is ruined. Have you seen Reservoir Dogs? No. Have you? Yes, but we're, we're, I came in, but I came in like, I've seen like the, I've only seen actually like 75% of it. I came in the other day, it was playing in the apartment and I finished it from like a fourth of the way in. Okay. Yeah. I remember coming like back halfway. That was a uh, Saturday night, right? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. I definitely need to watch that. And the reason I bring that up is because the premise of the movie was just like very early on. It was just like a bank robbery that went, went wrong. Um, would you I have I have a question for you? Would you rather attempt to rob one of the top five highest security banks, or attempt to murder the president or assassinate the president? Oh, banks easily. I think both would be very difficult. Very very difficult. I would say the bank just because the money. I mean, I've I've got nothing against killing the U.S. president. Yeah. I would go kill the Austrian president. <laughs> I'm sorry the. Prime Minister. Wait, do they have Prime Ministers in Austria? Are we talking Austria or Australia? Okay, I changed my answer. Australia. <laughs> I, think I would kill the Australian Prime Minister. Or no, do they have presidents there? It's a Prime Minister. It is a Prime Minister. Okay. Yeah. Any particular reason? Um, uh, I don't, he, he doesn't seem very chaos. He doesn't seem very cool. Good I might, you know. He just—he doesn't seem very. Uh, I mean, great. they did lose a war to a bird. So. <laughs> <laughs> twice, they have one species of bird. Twice, it happened <laughs> twice. They lost like they did like a two-year war and then lost and then tried again like two or three years later and lost again. How recently was this? I've always uh, heard it about was it. Like sixty years ago, right? Yeah, oh it was. It was during <laughs> the twentieth yeah. century. This wasn't like some. This wasn't like when they got dropped off and they were like, "All right, well, now we're angry. So let's have a war against these birds." And this was like a fully industrialized. They had bombs, tanks, a developed guns. country. Yeah, they lost, lost a war to a bird. Emus. And then, who was it? Brad, Kurt's old roommate. I he think got really mad when I brought it up. You brought it up. He got really upset. He got really defensive about it. Yeah, he did not like that. <laughs> Which is like an absurd thing to get defensive about. That's like funny. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why he would even get upset about that. They also have. What's interesting is Australia has like one of the longest fences. Like, for, like it's like a barrier across, like along the outback, and it's meant, I I believe, to stop <sighs> dingoes, maybe. Or dingoes are dangerous. Yeah, from like invading their um, their farm, towns, their farmland, or their towns, and yeah, whatnot. Hmm. Yeah, that whole country is just messed up. Yeah, I mean, it's everything there is just the, the land of the uh, the least fortunate. I mean, founded by. Um, unwanted people 
I'll just put it that way. Oh yeah, I was um, I was hanging out with Sophie one night, and she her adoption parents are Australian, so she has like cousins in Australia. And one night we were fishing, and we Facetimed her cousins, and it was it was weird. It was like eleven o'clock in Austin, like three a.m. there, not three a.m. But um, they're on the other side of the world. Yeah, whichever seventeen hours ahead is, but um, you can't do the math. I don't feel like doing the math. Um, okay. But it'd be seven o'clock. We were just asking them questions and they, you can't have guns over there. You can have pellet guns, but you can't go to the store. Like we can go to Academy and just buy a fucking 12 gauge. Right. They, they have not, they have more stabbings than shootings in Australia. So do we really, there's way more stabbings than shootings in the United States. It's not even close. I feel like it's easier to get away with stabbing someone anyways. And it's also way easier and way more accessible because anyways, <laughs> Yeah, I know. Um, that's just how their world works. And it's not for everyone. Fuckers lost fucking birds, man. I mean, that's probably why they lost, because they're not a lot of guns. Australia is way inferior to New Zealand, by the way. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, oh, have you ever been to New Zealand? Yeah. Why are you looking at me like that? Because I know you went to New Zealand. And it was beautiful. Yeah. No, it's just a way better country in almost every way. Do they speak the same? Uh, there's like mild variations in the way they speak, but it's like mostly the same. It's just like a better country in general. <laughs> just a better version. Yeah. Like a 2.0. I'd go to the Tasmanian Island. They also had a tank, New Zealand in World War II, called the Big Bob. The Big Bob? The Big Bob tank. Actually, no, it was actually, it was the Bob Semple tank, and then there was the Big Bob. I'm looking this up. Look it up. They look ridiculous. The Big Bob tank. <laughs> Ever... <laughs> I look, I pull it up, and it's just, everyone has their own idea of what the Big Bob looks like. And you know what? If this really what it looks like, it's a really... Oh. I can't remember if they ever actually made it or so, if it was, like, designed. Yeah, so this is the Bob Semple tank. Okay. I thought you said Semple, but it's Semple. S-E-M-P-L-E. Yeah, That's Semple. It's a Bob Semple tank. Yeah, it's, like, the most put, like, just crafted together. I think they just, like, scrapped part of their roofs and just... Just threw it all together. What that guy that drove through whatever town with the tank that he made at home out of a tractor? You haven't seen that? No. There's just this guy, I would say, in the last couple of years made a tank out of a tractor and started just, like, driving through buildings and causing mayhem, <laughs> and no one could stop him. Like, they had to bring in, like... The National Guard. Barricade Road. I'm very and confused. Was this some sort of like terrorist act or is he just like doing just it? Guy, this guy was nuts. He was like, hold on. Homemade tank rampage. <laughs> it's the first that comes up. So y'all have never seen this. No. I mean, I knew there was this guy in Houston that like parked his tank on the road. This guy market. literally drove through. I, I, I don't know what town I have to see, but he, made, he got a tractor and he made a tank. And he was just driving through buildings. I don't know if I don't know if he killed anyone, but I mean the laws are only enforceable if someone has like a bigger gun. So it happened in Granby, so small town <laughs> called the Killdozer. What <laughs> the Killdozer? He named it? Oh, he had a Was gun like, inside of it. Oh, that's not good. I don't think he. I think he was a. I think oh. He was all about chaos. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I think he. It was just a chaos type of deal. I think chaos is probably the most. Let's see. So this guy's name was Marvin Hemeyer. He was an automobile muffler repair shop on owner who demolished numerous buildings with a modified bulldozer in Colorado in 2004. That's a very specific profession. He was an auto automobile muffler repair shop owner, muffler repair shop owner. So, so he specifically had the muffler. So Hemeyer had feuded with Granby town officials, particularly over fines for violating city health ordinances after local officials disconnected his business from the city's sewage system to make way for a concrete plant on the adjacent parcel. He was subsequently fined for improperly dumping sewage from his business <laughs> instead of connecting to the city's sewer system. Over about 18 months, he had secretly modified a Komatsu bulldozer by adding layers of sheet and concrete i'm sorry steel and concrete intended to serve as armor in 2004 he feuded with granby culminated yeah in a spree in which he used an armored bulldozer to demolish the town hall 
the former mayor's house, and several other buildings. <laughs> the rampage concluded with his suicide after his bulldozer became trapped in the basement of a hardware store he had been in the process of destroying. <laughs> so, yeah, man, that happened. I, didn't, I thought y'all would have known about that. That's, I never heard about this that. This guy went nuts. 2004. He, he made a tank out of a bulldozer. I'm telling you, like, that's the kind of thing that, like, there's not, like, what, what is the government going to do about that? They would literally have to bring in the National Guard to stop that guy. They did. They brought the SWAT team, too. I mean, he was just running through buildings. I mean, he got the town hall, so he at least got one star. He got the... He it got sounds the, like he won, to be honest with you. I think he I did, think he too. he accomplished everything he wanted to. I mean, he got the town hall, he got the mayor's house, he got the hardware store he didn't like. A couple it, other buildings. Yeah, he just went straight through them, just demolished them. I'm sure you both remember, Nicole told me about this, where like a guy in Austin who was like really mad at like the IRS or something, flew a plane into a building like I remember right that. off 183. I remember the building smoking. I can see it in my head right now. So I was in sixth grade, and I had just gotten dropped off at school, and my dad was going to work. And on his drive to work, he passes this building. And so it was like, what? Sixth grade started at 8.20 in the morning. It was like 8.35 when he was passing it. He's going to the office. He was there for about five, ten minutes. And on the way back, he said that he saw all the smoke. And, I mean, people were getting out of their cars. And, I mean, no, thankfully, no one was killed other than the guy who flew the plane. But, yeah, yeah some guy who uh, did not like the IRS flew his private plane into the side of the building. So the reason I bring that up is because actually right around the same exact time, some person in Dallas, more specifically, I think Plano did the same thing. Really? Not into the, not into an IRS building, but like out of anger to, I think his employer flew a plane into a building. And I remember Nicole telling me this story and thinking like, maybe that's what I heard. Like I heard about the Austin one, but no, it happened like, I think like a couple months apart. Really? In Dallas. Maybe one inspired the other. <laughs> Very strange thing. Yeah. I do remember that. Me too. I, honestly, it's one of those things that, like, I've, I've brought it up multiple times on the podcast. It's one of those things that's just, it's in your memory. You don't know you know it until someone else mentions it. You're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. You no, know, every time I pass it I, and I see that building, I'm like, yep, I remember when that happened. Yeah. But what's funny is, well, I guess not funny. Um, nobody, so they repaired the building in about nine, 12 months. Mm-hmm. And then no one bought it for like five or six years. It just it just sat there vacant. So the IRS moved out, obviously, and no one bought the building for about five or six years. Interesting. And then I think Concordia bought it recently. Do you mean like rented it? Well, it? I mean, I, I would probably say, I think the IRS is renting that space. So whoever owns the building, they couldn't get anyone to, to move in. So watch out, plane danger. I mean, it's kind of a bad omen. It's like buying a house that someone's died in. Like people. Yeah. Did you know you have to like, you have to declare that? Really? If somebody has died in a house, that has to be like something that you tell the next, like the next buyer. It has to be declared. that Somebody has died in that house. Before they buy it. Correct. I don't, I don't know if it's like. And if you don't, what are they going to do? I don't know. How are they going to find out How about it? Hypothetically, out. they could see you down the line if they somehow found out about it. That someone died You're about to house. just make this, you're about to close this sale, and then you're like, shit, I forgot to tell them. Okay. By the back, way. Back in 2006, someone <laughs> committed suicide in the living room, so they just lost that sale. Well, I would just say, by the way, there is this really nice family that lived here before us. Unrelated. This This girl... Uh, didn't know what she was taking and she passed on the floor this one night and they had to put her in the ground. So do with that information as you will, but I hope you really like the house. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the Brad, do you have any in-person classes? This month? <laughs> I have two hybrid ones where we start the semester not in person, and then about two weeks from right now, we will be in person for the rest of the semester. Okay. It's kind of, that's how my and are. And to be determined. That actually just made me think of another point, which was you missed your nutrition thing today where they were talking about aspartame. Do you know what aspartame is? I don't Major? think I've heard of it. It's an artificial sweetener. Yes. 
and it actually does not give you cancer, despite what some of our friends may believe. Is that what they said in the lecture? Yeah. Yeah, I was taking a shower. Yeah. But it's very interesting because, like, it kind of brings up the question, like, do you honestly think that, like, would you prefer something that is natural over something that is, like, artificially created? 100%. Okay. Well, water's not technically natural. Water? Yeah. I mean, once we purify it, it's not. Well, I forget which, I think that might have been nutrition. We were trying to figure out, like, what is uh, natural, what is natural? Like, fat, fat is lipids. Right. But water technically isn't. And I don't know why that is. But anyways. Would you eat lab-grown meat? Lab-grown. I know that I have plenty of times. Um, no, like. Like grown in a petri dish, not like oh. not like grown, not like a cow raised in like a. You know, they, we're not gonna go down the cloning well, route. Well, couldn't you say Chick Fil A is made in a lab? What do you mean? <laughs> well, it's not real chicken. How do you know? Have you been in the kitchen? You've been in the back there. I mean, it's they not put love into that. It's not real chicken. I think it's real chicken. Um, so, so like the the premise of your question is: Would I rather eat something grown in a lab or? Not right. So, like, this is kind of. Have you ever had like a hydroponic strawberry? No, no. A strawberry that's been like grown in like a basically just in water, and they're grown inside of the, these very large, I guess, warehouses. And they sell them at HEB. Like, they're very large. They don't have any um, like Seeds? pesticides or oh. anything like that. Like, they're very. This this methodology of growing, it's kind of expensive, but it's like the most. Pure. You know, there's, there's no pesticides or anything involved. So that's why like, a lot of people like them. They're like the most organic you could get. Okay. And I think that lab grown meats is going to be like the next way that people start eating food. Well, isn't that what, um, what's that, that new meat company called beyond meat? Well, or, they're doing like plant based meat. Oh, well, I mean, that's still kind of lab deal. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever had that? I plant, have not. Plant based meat. Just, Wrap your head around that. That's a fucking oxymoron. Of course it is. Yeah. But have have you ever had Beyond Meat? I'm not going to. My problem with that is it has a lot of soy in it. Oh, yeah. I can't can't eat soy. (laughs) (laughs) We talked about this. Major, uh, whenever he he found out that he's allergic to soy by consuming soy. And (laughs) my throat. Yeah. So, Major cannot have any Beyond Meat. How many times did you have to eat soy before you figured that out? Like Twice. I remember the first time it happened, I didn't know why it was happening. And then the second time I looked at the nutrition and I realized the same thing from the last time it happened. I about this, but how old were you when you, like when this happened? The first time I was in fifth grade and then whenever I realized it was soy, I think I was in sixth or seventh grade. Okay. That makes sense. I didn't realize I was allergic to anything until my senior year of high school. What are you allergic to? Red wasp sting. (laughs) I think we've talked about this. Yeah. I broke out in hives. That's tough. Yeah. And I, I could be allergic to every insect on the planet. I just don't know. Dad's super allergic to bees, too. He yeah. got stung in, like, the bicep, and he, he looks like s- Arnold. Yeah, seriously. I could be allergic to bees, but we'll have to see. I've been stung by paper wasps. That's that's what a, a red wasp is. Really? Kind of, I think. Dude, I hate those things. What's uh, the study of insects? Is that optimum? No, at, at the mall. I just looked this up recently. Study it's not that. ephthalmology. I no, know that. study of... Ephthalmology. Is no, it's... Yeah, I uh, know. Ontomology. Ontomology. No, en- en- entomology. 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 How do you spell that? E-T-Y-M-O? Entomology. E-N-T-O-M-O. L-O-G-Y. Okay. Anyways, I'm not an entomologist, but I think paper wasps and red wasps are very similar. Paper wasps live in the ground or like... They burrow. And red wasps do the same thing. No, oh, they don't. They make oh, wait, I, I actually don't know what a paper wasp is then. I thought that those were the ones that build like the little. This mud like, dauber. No. Well, no. Like red wasps will make like a, a honeycomb, like a, a, yeah. a cone. And I've got, it's, it's kind of grayish looking. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah, it's very gross looking. That's, it's yeah, red wasps do that. Those things. The only time I've been stung by paper wasps, I went in the woods to, I don't know, fucking bullshit around. And I found this thing that we left out there like five years ago and so i tugged on it and as soon as i tugged on it i broke like a gap and like 50 fucking wasps flew out i was out of there paper wasps look like yellow jackets they're they're very that's what i thought yeah yeah yeah. maybe it wasn't a paper wasp whatever it was it was like black and brown and it came out of the ground 
For some reason, I don't like, I like dislike hornets more. Yeah. Lost. I think hornets <laughs> are, I don't know if they're worse or better, but like, just like the way they look is for some reason scarier. Okay, Jacob, we need to settle an argument. Okay. Do you think snakes are cute? Do I think snakes are cute? Yes. Absolutely not. Can snakes be cute? No. <sighs> yes. Even maybe, maybe like a like a grass snake if it's behind a sheet of glass. <laughs> so you hate snakes? I do not like them at all. How do you feel about spiders? I also dislike those. Which ones dislike more? I would I would dislike spiders more to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like I can I can see a snake. I can usually hear it. Spiders are hard to see, and they're they'll be on you before you know it. Spiders are just like, like it's just creepy. Yeah, I mean snakes I don't like because I can I guess it's just venomous snakes that I don't like. Like a snake that like like well, a grass snake be like whatever. Well, thankfully in Central Texas there's not that many venomous snakes. <laughs> there's like two rattlesnake. Are you kidding? There's me? like two or three. Have you ever held the snake that used to be down on Sixth Street? I'm talking about the guy who'd bring his like giant. I know a guy would bring a chicken. <laughs> You remember? Yeah. Max and uh, J- uh, Jackson took pictures with the guy with the chicken on yeah, 60. Yeah, there used to be a guy that also bring like a giant anaconda. Really? Or maybe something even bigger than that. What's like the biggest kind of snake? An anaconda. Is it that? Yeah. I think so. Then it was that, and you, you'd be able to like hold it. It was massive. Um, don't you have to be licensed to do that? Or is it just some random dude? This is, I, feel like, I feel like that, that would create some problems. There's a lot of liability potentially. You think it's gonna like in the middle of Sixth Street, with, like the cops on horses, the snakes gonna just like consume a small child? Well, I mean, <laughs> if it did, that <laughs> guy, that guy is in big trouble. I don't think he cares. To be honest with you, <laughs> he's bringing a snake to Sixth Street. I don't think this guy's got like he has a lot nothing, going on. <laughs> nothing to lose. Well, say, well, the the guy on Sixth Street with a chicken. I mean, I, actually, that's a, that's a great thing to bring. I would bring a chicken too. I mean, what, what do you do? He said you can hold the chicken if you pay me like 10 bucks, something like that. Was that his whole get? I think so. I've never actually seen him. I don't go to Sixth Street that often anyways. Well, whenever I go to Sixth, I go to West. And these things always happen on Dirty. Well, who was it? Kurt was saying that there was that awesome bar. that Yeah, the piano bar. Yeah, the dueling piano bar. Yeah. I think we should go. That well, sounds like should, a lot of fun. We should go. Sounds like and a lot fact, of fun. I'm probably going to go this, this Friday, actually. For really? Anybody else listening to the podcast, come show up. The dueling piano bar on Sixth Street. Yeah, um, because Nicole is having like this um, pregame get together. Yeah, and she wants to go downtown. Let's see. You know, I don't. I turn, I turn twenty in like three months. I thought you were already twenty. No, yikes! <laughs> I turn twenty in about three months, which means I'm a year in three months. Oh, we play Texas Tech this weekend. Twenty-one. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Here. Actually, now that I think about it, I think I have some friends coming down. I think it's an 11 a.m. game. Okay, sorry. Anyways, Major, you were saying? I want to get a fake, but I feel like if I was ever going to get a fake, the time has already passed. I'm too close. You're like 20 and a half. The only reason I would get one is so I could pull up to the dueling piano bar with y'all. I, I'm not a really big drinker, so I wouldn't use a fake to go buy my own alcohol. I would just do it so I can hang out. Yeah, that place sounds cool, so I'll, I'll check it out. I want to try an Adios, motherfucker. Uh, no, you don't. Yeah, I do. It's not. You've only been drunk a couple of times. I've been, like, plastered drunk maybe three times. I've never blacked out. Never? Never. I've Every time I've gotten drunk, I've remembered everything the next morning. Well, good for you. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> I'm not saying I wish I can't say that, but, like, what does it feel like when you're blacked out? Like, you... You just you just teleport to the next morning. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yeah, you just go through a wormhole, man. Oh my god, that sounds it sounds awesome, but it sounds very not awesome at the same time because you don't know what's going on. Well, the best way to look at it is you're still like kind of in control of what's happening, but not really. It's just the alcohol doing its thing, and you're. Now I can remember how you got the places. And then when you wake up, you're like, I remember getting somewhere, but then how did I end up here? You do embarrassing stuff, like say you're going to take somebody to Perry's. You do, you do things like that sometimes. 
I'll do that anyways. Yeah. You know, I had, a, I had, I have had a great time. I, unfortunately, for, well, fortunately, unfortunately, every Texas football game so far this season, I've gotten pretty drunk, and I don't remember most of the game, except for the Arkansas game. That one I didn't want to drink because I wanted to win that game really bad, and then we didn't score by halftime, and then that's when I forgot about the Arkansas game. So. I just need to be sober for one of these games. And it's going to be one of the morning games. So it's an 11 a.m. game. Or it won't be. We'll see. Mm, you can't drink. make it to the Rice game either. So Yeah. Dude, Rice got smacked. Like, well, yeah. I mean, that's kind of, you would think. Rice isn't a football school, but they didn't even put a field goal up. Yeah. Hey, man. They were just happy to be there. They were. They, they got to be there. That ain't much, but it's honest work. To be honest with you, at this point, have you seen? I think I've showed you the the new Texas ID. Yes, you have. It you cannot, and at least in my opinion, you can't make a fake version of that. Yeah, no, I have the new one as well. It, you can't fake that. Yeah, it does not work. No, it's not possible because it's kind of like the New York one, and that is like the kind of holographic type thing that's just like. I mean, if anything, Texas is easily probably one of the hardest states to fake. Well, it always has been. Just because of the shape and how the shape. Yeah, the shape. The shape is the hardest part. I still have my old ID that I've had since I was, what, 17? You don't have to surrender that? I, have, I mean, it's not expired, so. They, they, don't they just, oh, like, okay. cut the corner and, or something? Yeah, I mean, like, whenever you get a new ID, then they, they like, cut it. So you get, you get to keep all of your old IDs, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure... Dad showed me all of his IDs, and he's like, I've worn the same the same shirt in every ID picture for the last 40 years in case my identity ever gets stolen. They'll know it's me, or they won't know it's me. Because his picture, is, his shirt has been the same for the last, like, 40 years in his ID pictures. Well, good. I don't know, yeah. Is that necessary? Is what necessary? Wearing the same shirt, like a figure. No, I mean, it's totally not necessary. I'm trying to understand his logic. I'm trying to understand how that would help. Maybe if he claimed to be who he says he is and he's wearing the shirt, then like... I guess. Yeah. Oh, look, I've got the shirt. Yeah, I have. I literally have the shirt in all of the pictures. I don't know. It doesn't seem to me like that would be that helpful. It might be. Maybe Maybe there's more to that. Than I understand. We were at a... Um, to segue. We were at... I, last night... Brent knows this. Major, you don't. We had a... Uh, there was like a rushy event. For, oh, really? Okay. For PCT, yeah. And part of this event is we what 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 the purpose is is it's called speed friending. What you do is people like jump around from table to table, and you just try to meet them for like five minutes or so. But there's like four people per table, and so it was me and uh, two of my friends who are already in it interviewing like everybody. We all talked to like probably like a hundred people or so, and. Some of the, you just ask like whatever you want. One of our questions was like, who, do you have a favorite general? Like American general. And I would say the most common answer to that question was Robert E. Lee, <laughs> which is just <laughs> frightening. That's awesome. And I don't understand why. Fuck you, Liz. He says Grant. Apparently yeah. not him. Apparently not. I, the second most common was Washington. Thank God. I think... Ulysses was one of my favorite presidents. He was a pretty good president. I think he was just badass. Like there's, there's this one picture of him. He just looks like a baller. I my favorite has, has to be Eisenhower. I mean, there's a picture of um, Teddy Roosevelt riding a bear. Really? Yeah. Did he actually do that? He was Teddy Roosevelt was the biggest enforcer, like president of like making state parks. He's the reason why we have Yosemite and Yellowstone. He's actually an incredible president when you really think about what yeah. he did. Teddy did a lot. Yes, he did. I mean, when you think <sighs> about trust busting, I think he created the FDA or at least the, the groundwork for it. Mm -hmm. And obviously the national parks. He was pretty, yeah. pretty baller. And then, of course, creating his own party called the Bull Moose Party <laughs> and then failing. I mean, tell me that this president doesn't look badass. I mean, I mean if he's you compare him to Teddy, it's, it's very one-sided in my opinion. He's pretty cool, man. 
He and is then if you so compare cool. him to that guy to Taft, I even I would say. Taft? Yeah, Taft had some girth. <laughs> Girthy guy. Yeah, he, he he had some weight to him. William? William Howard, you know. Check up who's your favorite president. Honestly, Robert E. Lee should have been president, but anyways. That's a good opinion. I like that opinion. Yeah. <laughs> uh probably my favorite president. Good question. I think LBJ did a lot. Doesn't a lot of people lot. don't like LBJ. I found some bad things. Actually, there's, there's some interesting things that when you go back and you analyze some of what our presidents have done, like Nixon, obviously, Watergate is a horrible thing. You should not have done that. Espionage against the uh, political party is very bad. Still he happens, also did, But he also did the thing that a lot of people tend to forget, which is he created the EPA. The Environmental Protection Agency? Richard Nixon created the Environmental Protection Agency, or at least under his administration. That's when it was created, which is very interesting, especially from like a Republican president. To mm-hmm. done. So he did that. Obviously, I don't think he's not by any means my favorite. I think my favorite would probably be... Obama. Yeah, Obama's fine. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be FDR. FDR? Yeah. Everyone likes FDR. Yeah. I think he was great. He did a good job. He did. I feel like y'all would uh, feel weird about my favorite president. Okay, so Ulysses, he is, like, I just think he's cool. Like, he's a cool president. Thought he was awesome. We, we won the Civil War. That's great. Andrew Jackson. Yeah, I thought you were going to say Andrew Jackson was your favorite president. Yeah. Yeah. I do like Andrew Jackson. Because of his, like, uh, eccentricities his, or because he's, like, no, because he did not do good things. Well, no, because he established a non-centralized <laughs> banking system, or like he was the one that. Because I think it was who Alexander Hamilton that wanted there to be a U.S. bank, and he during his presidency he he got rid of the second the second U.S. bank. Yes, he did. Yeah, and then it opened the door for private institutions. Or just I like no, that that was a good thing. To be honest with you, um, I mean, I wouldn't have my A plus Federal Credit Union debit card. No, you'd have a U.S. Bank credit card. Also, Andrew Jackson did the Trail of Tears brand, which makes him a pretty bad president. Okay, so you say that's a bad thing. I uh, yeah, I think the Trail of Tears is kind of a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that would be the. Correct opinion there, yeah. You see, like that's like these bills that they try to pass through Congress. They're like the the Freedom Act. It's like it has to, like if you read the bill, it has nothing to do with freedom. It's like oh, you're How against does that. Have anything to do with the trail? So of then tears you of label freedom? it the Trail of Tears. You make it sound bad. So you're telling me, yeah, the, if it had a different the death march, <laughs> <laughs> if it had... Andrew Jackson forced several Native Americans, and when I say several, I mean. Oh, is that hundreds of thousands? Yeah, so, maybe more. Walking barefoot through the snow. All the way to Oklahoma, <laughs> easy which in and of itself is a sin. Easy with the bike. So um, I just mean, if you... You think it's just a branding issue? It is a branding issue. Okay. Okay. That's a good point. The Trail of Tears was Things, branded wrong. If it, if it was branded as the long walk, <laughs> it doesn't sound that... Hike through the woods. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all it was guys it was it was just like a really long hike do people do those all the time i mean you see these tiktok channels where people like to do these like long walks to the woods kurt just got back from a long walk i mean it's the same thing right yeah it's it is the same thing i mean pretty much i mean like people did it whenever they when the u.s is expanding to the west people did it willingly i mean you may be forced yeah, to some do people it gave up in oklahoma exactly so <laughs> what i'm saying is like yeah i'm sorry you're you're being forced to walk but so uh, I'm forced to pay taxes. Same thing. Well, you're not forced to pay taxes. You could avoid them if you wanted to. Well, you have to get to a certain echelon, a certain tax bracket. Once you get high enough, once you make enough money, yeah, you can pay virtually no taxes. If you're like good enough at taxes, I would say. Well, we could have Ryan Graves do our taxes. I think we'd pay nothing. I'd rather have Max do them, honestly. Would you? No. I don't think Max knows how to do taxes, to be honest with you. Really? So actually, this was a close friend of ours, Brant, up until recently, did not understand how taxes work. And it was very funny to me because 
I assume you obviously know that taxes are marginal. Right. So a close friend of ours, who I am going to be respectful to because I don't want him to get mad about this, up until recently believed that if, for instance, if there were only two tax brackets in the United States. Which there's not. Which there's not. But if this is just the hypothetical, like this is, he genuinely believed like this is how it worked. So let's say there were two tax brackets and it'd be like $100,000 is the cutoff. So if you make above $100,000, you'd pay like 50%. And below, you pay nothing or pay 10%. He thought that if you made $99,999, 99, $99, you'd pay that 10%. And so you'd get done like 90000 right? But he thought if that you made $100,000 or more, that you would then be taxed $50,000 because you're in that bracket. That's not quite how it works. No. Um, I would like to talk to this person later. Yeah. You could talk to him. I, am I going to find him um, by my apartment? Yeah. I mean, he's a very smart guy. You would think that he would have understood this, but he did not. Oh, I think I know who you're talking about. You don't. Really? Well, maybe you don't. I don't know. But I'm trying to get away from this very boring, mundane topic. I just thought it was funny. Yeah, taxes are awesome. Yeah, they're really cool. You know how I feel bad for, actually, is... Also, all jokes aside, I was totally kidding about the Trail of Tears. Obviously. Um, I was kidding about having a fake ID, by the way. I never had one of those. Just for the record. Yeah, I've never, ever had one of those. Um, Neither have I. I mean, I actually agree with Major in that. Like, once I hit 20, I was like, I'm not going to get one. There's no point. Yeah. I mean, just wait. The juice of the whole fruit is pretty much gone. Like, the the fruit for coming becoming 21 and having a fake is... it's past its right point but then you can't do like you know the whole send-off thing where you you know i don't need it anymore throw it into the the ocean honestly i would get i would order a fake id of like not so i can be 21 just like a like an alter elias like john, alias john smith yeah, alias just i don't know i'm from connecticut I'm, <laughs> I'm an organ donor i don't know are you not an organ donor I don't fucking, I don't think so. It's on your ID. Yeah. I don't, I don't have my ID with me. I don't know. Where is it? My truck. Why do you, okay, anyways. How do you not know if you're an organ donor? Like, you didn't check that box off whenever you got your driver's license? Do you think I, you sh you would want to be an organ donor? I, I probably would be. I am. You know what's it, interesting about that is that. And inherently that makes me a better person than you. Well, just like fly fishing. <laughs> yeah. I mean. But there was this interesting thing that I learned is like a proposed, um, I guess, theory, regulation, whatnot, that this was like in microeconomic theory that I learned this. And one of the people believe this is not how it works currently, but do you think that it would be a good idea to like incentivize people to become an organ donor if, like, say you, for whatever reason, maybe your kidneys fail and you need, um, you needed an organ transplant if because you had signed up to be an organ donor, that puts you higher on the list to receive a kidney. That would make sense, but in certain scenarios that that might fuck someone over. The might, idea is no, to incentivize people to become organ donors so that there's more uh, to there's give. A higher, there's a more supply there's a higher supply of of organs to be donated. Because at the end of the day, I mean unless you have like legitimate religious like beliefs against it which i don't know if there are that i know of but maybe some people who are like very into uh, yeah there, i'm sure there's selection. something out there there is definitely something out there but um i don't know why you wouldn't do that seems to me pretty obvious i guess that's i guess major brings up a good point like if you had a legitimate religious ex it, it, uh, a, like opposal or whatever objection there we go there's the word then maybe yeah that would kind of screw them over yeah but that, i feel like more people are organ donors than not I don't know. I don't know what the statistics are on that. I think it's less than you think it is, though. Really? Let me look it up. What do you think it is? And then I'm going to say more than 50%. Okay. I'm going to say it's 30%. Let's see. 54%. It's not that much. It says, according to Donate Life America, while 95% of U.S. adults support organ donation, only 54% are actual registered donors. So so. Very, it, and that's an interesting disparity there if you think about it like 95% support the idea but like won't participate 41% won't participate I mean 
because it kind of gets into this this area where if you die they've got about three minutes to harvest your organs as fast as possible so then there's a chance you could i mean you could flatline and they could bring you back but then in the process of trying to bring you back you there wouldn't be enough time to harvest your organs entirely or efficiently i don't think it's three minutes i think there's longer you think it's longer than three minutes I think it's longer than that yeah it's gotta be well because it takes longer than three minutes to harvest some of the organs so the reason people wouldn't be and i understand this logic is that if i died you know if i flatlined i could still be resuscitated um and it would be just it'd be conflicting with the donation of organs because they could they're faulty. They, they would just no, they would just decide that I'm dead, but and even though they could bring you back, for the case, just because they're trying to get your organs. So, like it makes sense, but at the same time, there's a lot of people who say like, do not resuscitate. Yeah, I have seen that plenty of times. So, because then you start getting into some really upsetting situations that people have where they're resuscitated and they're just not the same person anymore because they're virtually brain dead. Because the time that they were, their heart wasn't beating, there wasn't enough oxygen going into their brain, and parts of their brain died, it decayed, and then uh, they're just not the same. And people would rather not be that way or live that way than live at all. It's like gray area between fruit and vegetable. You are awesome. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I think I'd be in that same category. I would say don't resuscitate if I, I was ever found in that position. I didn't really? know that the do not resuscitate was for that reason where like your brain will start to decay and your functions will be less when you come back to life. But I thought the do not resuscitate where the people are like, I'm fucking ready to die. Just don't. <laughs> well, it's that too. <laughs> it is of, that too. There's plenty of old people who are like, I don't like, just like for real. Don't bring not. me back. If I go out, I'm out. That's, that's the Lord. <laughs> Turn the lights out. That's the Lord taking me. It's an interesting thing, actually, that I don't know how we're on this topic, but. Talking about um, IDs and an organ donor. Yeah, but this actually occurred to my grandmother. It was very interesting. It was like, it was like transitory or transient retrograde amnesia. The, 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 the wording on that might be a little off, but the, the premise, sorry, the syndrome that she had was one day. Like my grandfather was like talking to her and, and all of a sudden, like she could not remember anything at all. It just happened out of the blue, out of the blue, just like sitting at home. And all of a sudden he like said something but like, Oh yeah, we were at like water, um, water this morning. Like what is a water exercises that older people do? Jazzercise. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, we weren't there. I never did that. And then she like collapsed into like this, like, she like total amnesia, like could not remember who she was and whatnot. Wow. And then 24 hours, she like remembered everything again. And it's just kind of like freaky to me, the idea of, there's actually a, a Channing Tatum movie about this. How would you feel if you like married your wife and you're like in love? Mm -hmm. And you, I think you're thinking of a different, I'm thinking of an Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. 50 first dates. Maybe. And there's, no, there literally is a Channing Tatum movie about this, but. There's probably several movies about this. And then your wife, like say like a couple years into your marriage, is hit in the head and loses like 10 years of her memory or something or ever, or all of her memory. How would what I feel? You, what do you do? I don't I, <laughs> I mean, if you were thinking about it before, it's the perfect time to get out. <laughs> I mean, talk about a we gift. Were married, no, talk, about, talk about a gift. <laughs> if you were ready to go, time has come. But then, you know, her family is probably like, you're such an asshole. <laughs> You have kids, and you're just like, these aren't my kids. <laughs> <laughs> they may look like me, but believe me. They look like both of us, but actually, the, they're completely unrelated. And yeah. I'm, I'm actually neither. Uh, I mean, what other choice do you have? I mean. Other than divorce? I don't think <laughs> <laughs> Other than leaving her for a much younger version of. <laughs> yes. Of just. Or it would give you the perfect opportunity to start an alternative lifestyle. To start a second family. Start a second family. Which is actually something that has happened to a friend of mine. Her dad tried to start a second family while he was still married to her mom. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like he had proposed to this woman. To, to another woman. Like he was still married. 
And he, I can't say her name because right, right, right. you actually would be able to figure it out. Um, <laughs> and he had proposed to this other woman. He was literally going to like marry her, which I don't know how that works like under the law because I'm pretty sure there's a database somewhere that would like ring like what in the hell is going on. I mean, I know in certain cultures, dudes have like five wives. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, that's for sure. But also no, this guy's not like starting that. a second family. So he didn't get away with it. They caught him. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, you can't get away with kind of like that's It's so much harder. It's like, I'm going to Japan now. I'll see y'all later. Exactly. It's literally the Jim Gaffigan movie. But it's this happened to my friend. And um, I don't think you can get away with stuff like that anymore. Like, you can't, you can't have your college girlfriend and your hometown girlfriend, right, Brent? No. And so this, I would say that kind of ended with social media as a whole. I think, you know, in the era of big brick telephones, you could get away with that. like people having phones on the walls. I mean, like 30, 40 years ago. Easy. You can get away with it. Maybe about 200 years ago. <laughs> you can have still like that, several still, wives. Now that was a time. Oh, Darcy, I'm off to visit the, uh, the, the, the city. And he like, goes and like hangs out with his city family. Right. But then even Alexander Hamilton, I think he was a philanderer. Um, Dude, Ben Franklin was. So was he. And, it's funny, we know that now, so I'm sure a lot of people knew it back then, so maybe you couldn't get away with it. <laughs> but then also think about all the people who we highly respect today that were, that got away with it. Like Bill? Bill was different. He was kind of in the, a position where, why would you try to do that when you're... There's, That's just power, dude. Like It's just corrupt. It's a power you. play. It's total power move. It's a total frat move. Absolutely. It's a frat move. So frat. Major, what's your opinion on Bill and his relationships? On Bill and his relationships, I did hear plenty of how all that went down. Do you still want the dress? Of course. You want the dress? Wait, I think we're talking about... I'm thinking of a different Bill. Are you thinking of Cosby? No, I'm thinking of Gates. Oh. Oh, Oh, he had that... what's with Bill lately? (laughs) (laughs) Bills are are going crazy, man. I was I was thinking of a different bill. I think we were thinking about the same one. Yeah, we're talking. Uh, yeah, we were, we were talking about Clinton. Yeah, yeah y'all, you Gates. brought up the dress. I actually never looked into what Bill Gates was up to. Um, there was a lot of like behind the scenes, like he was hitting on coworkers and like yeah, sexual harassment. Oh, really? I'm telling you, like these billionaires, like they got money. Think about what that does to you. That can make Think it go about away. What having as much money as like several nations will do to you. I mean, it's just like you can do whatever you want to do, literally. And not to bring up a very morbid topic that explains it perfectly, but Jeffrey Epstein, he had money and power and got away with so much until the end. Until the end. That's the problem. Like that's that's why these billionaires need to be taxed at ninety nine percent, all the way down to zero. There's actually, what you can look this up if you want. The top, might be not just the 1%. I think it might be even narrower. No, it's like the 0.1%. Yeah, I, they made an obscene amount of money during COVID. Like an obscene. Yeah, I mean, it's the Chipotle's, the Amazon's, the McDonald's, you name it. I mean, yeah. McDonald's owns Chipotle. Not no, anymore. Not anymore. Actually. I think the, the original guy who started Chipotle bought, bought a... Bought it back. He, he bought it back. sold it to them for like... like a lot, six hundred so, million, something crazy, and it's no. But he like bought it back for less because they like messed it up. Oh, it was really? So hilarious! It was like the best business deal of all time. He sold Chipotle to McDonald's. They messed it up. E. coli in the food or whatever, and he bought it back for less. He literally Played sold them. high and bought low. He's a genius. And then it thrived during COVID. Absolutely. I mean, I still don't really. I mean, when you compare that to Cabo Bob's, it's like not even close for me. Yeah, Cabo Bob's is a lot better. I mean. Cabo Bob's needs to expand. I think if my life just like completely goes under, I'm going to start my own like franchise of Cabo Bob's and that's just going to be it. Mm. That'll be a happy life for me, I think. Uh, I know I'm kind of stupid, so explain to me what's NYSE. Are you New fucking, York you exchange? are lying. You just asked that. Stock exchange. Okay. Did you just actually ask that question? Okay. And then CMG, what's the, the Chicago? Uh, Wait, no. Chipotle. That's Chipotle. CMG Chipotle? Chipotle Mexican Girl. Okay. You know what their stock's at right now? I did not even know they had stock. I didn't know that. 1800 a, a share. Who? 
Chipotle. Chipotle is eighteen hundred a share. They must not have a lot of shares then. Yeah, yeah eighteen hundred. They, they just share. don't have a lot of shares then because, like, to be honest with you, I I don't know. I don't know what the margin on their food is, but it cannot be that high. Not to get into a heavy business. Yeah, market. seriously. But like fast food, even Chipotle, which is like kind of like that pseudo fast food where it's it's not it's not it's, it's not, not fast food, but like it, it is, is fast it's, food. It's still, like. The, their margins are not high. Like, they can't... Like, when I go to Cabo Bob's and I order an $8 burrito, or I guess eight eighty now, or whatever they've upped the price to, it's like... Yeah. That's not... The margin is not that big. Maybe two bucks. They have to sell two. so many burritos to make their money back. Yeah. And that's just because they live in a highly commoditized market versus Apple, who obviously you've seen success with lately. They just make so much freaking money. It's not even funny. Right. And then, I mean, just looking at Chipotle's revenue... In 2019, can you guess what their revenue was? Their revenue in 2019? Oh, probably like... 400 million. 2 billion, maybe? 5 billion. 5 billion. Holy okay. And then COVID. So, okay, I don't so I don't know... 8 billion. The 2020 numbers aren't out yet. They should be. The 2020 10K for Chipotle? Look it up. 2020 10K Chipotle. Let's see. Wait, you said... They're absolutely, actually... They absolutely are out. You said 2020 10K for Chipotle. Like, if you want to look up someone's numbers for the year, you look up their 10K? Yes. That's the financial document that they file with the SEC okay. every year. It's like their annual report. I was I was trying to find Amazons, and one thing I found out about Amazon, in the United States alone, in 2019 alone, in only Prime subscriptions alone, they made $2 billion dollars. Just in the United States, just on Prime crazy. subscriptions. It's because then once you order something, they probably take a good two bucks out of that. They take 15%. Oh my God. There's yeah. people that spend thousands. They take 15% of the price of the, of the good. And I know that because my dad's trying to sell something on. Amazon. Here's a, a 10Q. This is for the quarter. Like yeah, the, 10Q is for the quarter. 10K is for the year. So there might be a 10Q from, or 10Q from like this last quarter. But there's definitely a 10K, 100%. Okay, so let's just see. The 10Q might come up because it's probably more recent. Okay, so 2020. Okay, so let's see. Six months ended June 30th, 2020. Food and beverage revenue. Uh, I thought it'd be more. What is it? Sounds like it's only for six months. 2.7 million? Is it in? It's probably 2.7 billion. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 2.7 billion. Yeah. For one quarter? Yeah. That sounds like... No, it's six months. For one qu- Yeah, so then, I mean, double it, 5.4. Yeah. And it's actually probably more, actually, because if that's like June 2020, it probably saw increased sales over like the next six months. Yeah, June 30th, 2020, six yeah, six months ended. Yeah, so if you hit... Three months ended in 2020 was 1.3. Billion. Yeah, so they probably hit somewhere around 5.4. Yeah, so I mean, they made a lot of money. But 10% growth just in one year is actually insane. That's, yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, and so that's just indicative of where the market was at. I mean, their competition was like nothing, though, because like there were several restaurants that just weren't open. I mean, like their whole market, I mean, the next closest could be what, Qdoba? And Qdoba isn't that big. I actually have no, like, yeah. I've never been to Qdoba. I don't like it. I mean, there was one on campus that's gone. Yeah, people didn't go there. It was not good. I mean... I don't... I can't even think of... Oh, I guess um, there's Freebirds. They compete There's with Freebirds, but they're Austin-based. So there's going to be, like, local places that well, can compete. Well, they're not Austin. They're, well, I guess they, even if they are, like, there's a Freebirds in Dallas. Like, they're they're not as localized as, say, like, a Cabo Bob's is. Yeah, they started in Austin, but they're definitely going to expand, like, Whataburger. Oh, I was I was totally wrong. Um, Freebirds first opened in 1987 in Santa Barbara. Oh. And spread to College Station, Texas. Jesus. So, you guys ever had Lane's? No. Lane's don't, chicken? Don't it's like, so. it's College Station's main attraction. Rip off of Cane's, and they swear by it. They think it's amazing. Who like, does? College Station. Like the Aggies. They literally, it's called Lane's. I'm not even kidding. Lane's. Guys. Yeah, literally. Look it up. Lane's. L-A- How do you spell it? It might be L A N E S, but it might, also, it might be L A Y N E S. It, they actually opened Lane's Chicken Fingers. They literally opened one in Frisco, Texas, which is where I lived for a couple years of my life. 
and it's oh my god it's literally a Kane's ripoff yes it's literally a Kane's ripoff and the thing about it is they think it's better it's not in college station it's like really really cheap though that's what lanes looks like you're fucking no it on. looks like it's like it's it's a ripoff their of sauce the, is almost identical the only thing they got wrong was the coleslaw yeah that's their sauce is almost identical they make their their uh, bread slightly differently i think it's inferior they have potato salad which but is, it's also if you lanes and college station is incredibly cheap like very very cheap and that's why people like it well i mean you can get a kayak combo for what 1250 which yeah. is yeah pretty i think an equivalent amount of food at, at lanes is probably like eight bucks really yeah because i think that like a four-piece combo at lanes is like five dollars in college station or something that's what somebody told me i've never actually been to that one the fourth piece the four piece combo at canes is like eight or nine bucks yeah. and their menu looks just like canes too no it's the same thing so i don't understand i guess it, i guess the guy's name is lanes that's what the funny thing about that though like because if <laughs> i could make and i'm pretty sure this is true i could make a business if i change my name to canes like my last name to canes i could make a thing called canes you can get five chicken fingers for 7.94 because yeah. the Kenyak combo is six, and that's twelve bucks. So, yep. It's I mean, like I mean, for the price, it's pretty good to be honest with you. But rip off. I don't like it because it's a rip off, and it's from College Station. I mean, that is one thing I kind of shot for with my business is being a rip off. Not no, <laughs> not being a rip off, but their margin is very tiny for that chicken yeah, I mean, it's nothing it's half the price of canes and you're getting the same amount of food you know what margin would be amazing brent the spoofing of um fobs on west campus that would be great yeah i don't think it's legal but it would be so easy smoothing Spoof. spoofing so there's like uh, do i have mine on yeah so make sure you talk across yeah your right. yeah you're good so like this you have this fob mm -hmm. if you lose one of these it's like 80 bucks replace which is absurd because it's literally an rfid signature on like a piece of plastic and i don't know how expensive the fob is itself but i have a feeling it's not 80 dollars. <laughs> is that much the cost 80 yeah it might be a dollar so not, no uh, if you what, bought the piece of plastic itself is probably like 80 cents i actually don't know how you put an rfid signature on something i think that there probably has to be like a piece of metal or a chip in there yeah, there's a chip in there exactly so then I, the thing itself might cost like four bucks, but I don't know how much the machine costs to attach an RFID signature to something like that. But there's no way it's there, there's no way that it comes out to being eighty dollars a unit. So you could probably like a sell, like tell people to come by. You say, oh, come by, I'll scan your. You can go online and buy them for seven bucks. So yeah. then, then you have to get the machine to make it. The machine to make it, which I mean, I'm sure you could look that up too. I have no idea how much that is, but. I mean, you calculate the break-even point. It's not that hard. You just don't. The problem is it's on their server. Like, it's on their system. So then... No, you just... You wouldn't be able to replace one. You would have to say, all right, it was, would be, this would be like a preemptive action. Like, you'd say, like, oh, they gave you a fob, right? Yeah. Come to my business. I'll sell you... Come, You'll scan your fob with me. I'll attach an identical RFID signature to a duplicate fob. You'll have two fobs. In the event that you lose one of your fobs you'll have a replacement and, oh. you, and you will not have to pay $80. So then you would need the you'll first fob. Correct. You would you would do this preemptively. This would not be something that... that oh, it's like I already lost it. I need a new one type yes, thing. Yes, and, Right. And then you maybe say like, oh crap, I lost my fob. I have to use my backup one. I'll go get a new backup one. That's That that would be the business idea. I don't know that that's legal. I mean... There certainly is a market for it. There's definitely some... I can't think of the word, but like some breach issues i guess because if you give someone like if you're the person like duplicating these fobs you have all like you, you could, have all the data yeah you could get into any fucking building so well one video that comes up is how to program a fob key to an apartment door using hotel what is this using hotel lock management software i mean they're the same thing yeah so it's doable it's absolutely doable. In fact, what was it that there was? I remember I used to go on um, to hotels, and you you have to be careful, isn't it? You have to be careful with like your hotel key because if you put it like next to your phone or something, it could like wipe next it. to a magnet. You'll next to a magnet. You'll demagnetize it. Yeah, I've had that happen 
way too many fucking times because I have one of those wallets that's like two pieces of metal and it like you clip it's like a almost a money clip but like you fold your money in half and then it just like pins it together. I can't put like hotel cards in there. They're deactivated in like two minutes. Yeah, it's annoying. Yeah, so really what you would need is this thing, like that little stand. You plug that into your computer and then you can program it from your computer. How much is that stand? I don't know. I bet you it's probably like maybe a hundred bucks. It's probably a hundred dollars. It's probably pretty expensive. No, that thing's tiny. Well, it's it's still performing some kind of sp- special service. I guess, but like I still think that it this would this this business would break even pretty quickly. If it's like a hundred bucks, you'd break even in the first day. <laughs> exactly. Like if, if I said, Hey, you I'll give you for forty bucks, half the price. There's plenty of videos that say how to duplicate key fobs. Yeah. So that's doable, it's easy. So So what about duplicating car key fobs? That's the business all on its own. I know I remember one time Probably possible. Dad was telling me about this thing. Like during Christmas, we went to the domain to like get Christmas presents for people. And like, as we were, he let me sit in the truck for like an extra five minutes. Cause I was like charging my phone. He was like, just make sure whenever you get out of the truck, lock it from the inside and don't lock it from the fob. Because apparently there's people out there that have invented devices where if you're walking away from your car and you like double click to lock it from the fob, they can use a device to pick up that signal and like either prevent it from being locked or they can like kind of tap into that frequency and unlock it themselves. Right. But then they also need it to start the vehicle. I mean, if they're just trying to lick shit out of your car, they just need to unlock it. Yeah. It sounds to me like if they can unlock your car, they could probably also trick your car into thinking the key was in there. That uh, too, yeah. yeah. So yeah, people do that. Which also makes me think that like at, at that point, how does your car know the key is in there? Obviously, there's like some radio signals going on. But. Um, it's it's weird. So I, I'll notice it with like with the door. So if I as soon as you close the door while the while the vehicle is running and you have the key on you, it'll get mad at you. But if you put it on the seat and then close the door, I think it's it's there's some kind of receiver inside the the truck or the car, probably in the doors. I can right. tell. So then, wouldn't that say that the car, at the very least, no, I think like even while it's off would be emitting some sort of signal searching for that key. I guess it's probably just like a signal looking for a response signal. It's just a receiver looking for a signal. So then as soon as it does, well, if it, I mean, I do know with mom's old car, like if you lock the car and then you're coming back to it to get in and go, you don't even have to unlock it. You just have to have the key in the vicinity and you just grab the handle. It's constantly emitting a signal. So it must be like, so does that mean the key you're also wearing is constantly emitting a signal? So that that then the question becomes, does it even matter? Like if somebody had this device. Then you think about it, when these car manufacturers are making these keys, if they knew it would be that easy to tap into, they wouldn't have made them this way. There's probably some sort of like encryption or something that goes on there. Yeah, there definitely is. I mean, people who work for these companies are a lot smarter than, I mean, who design these fobs are probably a lot smarter than you and I. We well, certainly know more about how these things work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elon Musk, um, a while ago, he said he would give anyone a million dollars if they could hack a Tesla. Just think about it. You're driving down the road, you're shooting your Tesla and you're going no. fast. Someone just hacks into it and you're like, hey, you're not controlling this vehicle anymore. He, he really said he'd personally give someone a million dollars if they could hack into a Tesla? Yeah, he was like... No, that's that's totally... like He would totally do that. I would like... He was like, I would like to see someone try and do it. I mean, if you think about it, a million dollars, that's that's a dollar bill to us. <laughs> That's not, yes, it is. It's a dollar bill to us. No, that's nothing to him. And in fact, if somebody could do that and he offered them a million dollars, what he's actually doing is probably paying more than, say, somebody who somebody else who would like that ability. Yeah. I mean, he's basically paying a million dollars to protect his car even more. Because if someone shows him how they hacked it, he just paid a million dollars to protect his Teslas even more. He doesn't have to do a giant recall or something to figure out the problem. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually a really smart thing to do. In fact, you guys talked about this. And I told you, I, I, I talked to Major about it a little bit because I already talked to Bran about it. Do you guys remember when you were talking about how certain celebrities have insured different body parts? Yeah. So what's interesting is you guys brought up, was it Messi or Ronaldo? I think it was Ronaldo. 
uh, in how he'd insured his legs. Yeah. yeah. In fact, it was his team that had insured his legs. His team insured the legs? Yeah, because his contract, I'm fairly certain, and uh, he, I could be wrong, but what made sense to me when I was listening to you guys talk about that was I'm pretty sure that a lot of the money in there is guaranteed. So the team has an insurance policy on his legs in the event that he can't play anymore. And so if his legs give out, they've been paying insurance premiums to somebody. I don't know how much. So that they'll have to, they'll probably have to pay out a, cons- a considerable amount of money to Ronaldo, um, even even though he's not going to play. But they'll also get to like cover that with their insurance policy that they put on his legs. So it's actually just a hedge against all of the money they put into him, saying like, Ooh, like we guaranteed him all this money. If he can't play, we have a way to recoup some of the money we promised him. That makes a lot of sense. Because I mean, with those huge ass contracts, it we already it was, it was about like five hundred million. It. It's obscene, and they a lot of that I'm pretty sure is guaranteed, and so that's why they have to do stuff like that. Yeah, like with Alex Rodriguez, we already mentioned this on the podcast when he played for the Rangers. He got this fat contract, and I don't remember what happened, but he ended up going to the Yankees a few years later, and he still had like five years left on his Rangers contract. So he was getting paid by two teams while he was just playing for one. Just absurd. Some of those contracts are just like insane. What do you think I, 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 that is so much money? I don't. I don't even know what you. Oh, interesting. I think oh, I real quick. So right before Ronaldo signed his contract, his four-year contract with Juventus, Juventus. I don't know how to pronounce that soccer team. Is worth an average of about sixty-four million a year. It expires in twenty twenty-two. Um, let's see. Ronaldo, a five-time FIFA Player of the Year in twenty twenty, became the first active team sport athlete to surpa- surpass one billion in career earnings. That's crazy because normally it's flipped. You make like a hundred million from your career and nine hundred million from your sponsors and endorsements. That's how we go. I mean, that's how it went for Tiger. Yeah. Tiger got paid out the wazoo from Nike. That's how. Uh, that's what happened to LeBron too. He's only made like two hundred million from his career, but he's made like six hundred million or more from, from Nike. Nike. Yeah. Endorsements, man. They're pretty cool. Oh, there's actually another thing that I I remember that this is another thing I would have wrote. I I would have written down, but I'm glad that I remembered it. I think you guys were talking about uh, how much money, um, let's say, Minute Maid pays to be on Minute Maid Stadium. Yeah. We're talking about that. Yeah. I think it was like probably around 700000 close to a million dollars a year. It's a lot of money. What's interesting about that is that was something that my dad did when he worked at PepsiCo. What he was going to try to do is he's trying to figure out is that money worth it? Like, do we... So in Pepsi, as, an, as an analyst? Yeah, I'm sorry, was, no. I'm sorry, what was your dad doing? My dad was like vice president of data analytics at Pepsi like okay, okay. probably 10 years ago at this point. And one of the things he was trying to tackle before he left was do we see a, a net gain on putting our name, like spending a considerable sum of money and putting our name on these stadiums? Like, is it that important? And it's actually a really difficult problem solve because you don't really know it's really hard because you have to what he was going to do to try to tackle that is he was going to take season ticket holders of whatever professional team uh, pepsi co sponsors actually have no idea i think it's in new york somewhere pepsi um and then what he was going to do is he was going to compare it to somebody who might own who might have like a target card and he was like trying to match those groups of data up but they're very very difficult to do because some of these places like lord like protect their proprietary customer information very heavily so it's a very difficult problem to solve he probably would have been able to do it but then he left which is a very so, interesting problem so in colorado where the denver nuggets play used to be known as the pepsi center but now it's called the ball arena yeah i don't know this was a while ago so yeah, the pepsi center when was it the pepsi center it's actually a great question but anyways, yeah, at one point in time, the Denver Nuggets played in the Pepsi Center in Denver. So, yeah, I don't know how you would go about solving that. But, like, you could look at the season ticket holders, but also a really obscure way of looking at it is, like, okay, so we can take our margins from this year, compare them to, you know, these years following. I mean, you can look at each quarter. Well, I mean, you could try to, like, sponsor a new team somewhere. And then compare last year's market data to this year's market data and see if there's any change. But there's so many things you have to control for that that should be a data analyst nightmare. Yeah. But I mean, if you're paying all this money to be on the side of a stadium and 
I mean, you can to me, try. It to... seems almost like it's just like a perk. Like, like I figure, I figure a part of those contracts has like they get like a box or something, and then they like, right. send employees. And but, stuff. but then is that box really worth two million dollars a year? I mean, I, I mean, mean, how much is a box at the UT Stadium? Um, it's. I mean, we don't have a box. We were, we've been in the club, so. Oh, I don't. I, what is the difference? Um. Well, box is different. Boxes um, those those private rooms. Like right. A whole What's room? the club? Um, it's, it's hard to describe. I mean, there's, there's variations of it at different stadiums, but, um, I don't, I don't know what the endowment is or what that looks like, but, um, it's, it's kind of up there. I mean, to get a box, I mean, let, let's just say like a minor league baseball team, like the Round Rock Express, okay. one of those boxes, I want to say it's probably gonna be around 75 K a year. To have a box like that at a small stadium in small so? small town Texas, oh yeah. Look it up. Look up how much it costs to get like a UT box, like to buy one. I bet you it's a lot more than you think. I I know it's it's really expensive, and you know what? Because of the SEC thing, it's going to get even more expensive. Season yeah. ticket holders before Texas goes to the SEC, money, money. Some people see stuff like that as like an investment, like an alternative form of investment, like yeah, having like a box and like a stadium. Passive income. You just yeah. sell your tickets every year. Yeah, definitely could do that. So the way that it, that it works is each ticket is technically worth $630. So this is for a Centennial Suite and also the Texas Club. So the, it's about $630 per ticket. And then it depends how many season tickets you're buying, right? Um, and then you have to make an in-kind donation on top of that. Okay. Um, in order to keep them. Otherwise, they will take them away. Okay. So how it's... Many, how many tickets are in a box? Uh, what, like 20, 30? Remember, did you go? I've never been in a box. I've okay. Been, I've been in a box in a, in a minor league park a long time ago that wasn't in use. It wasn't even that nice. The I've only been... time I've ever been in one is when I, I watched USC play it was, it was a while ago i watched usc play someone um this was been like four years in ago. california no this was actually in the dallas cowboy stadium oh nice yeah i think i, I sat in a box last fall for the first time ever and there's about yeah 20 30 seats so wait a second you didn't make it to the rice game and you had box seats uh no i i did so i the the rice game um we had four tickets between me and my brother and his friends. And my dad offered me two. And then Ben keeps wanting to take tickets away from me so he can take his friends. So I was like, fine. I couldn't find someone that I wanted to take to the rice game. So you can have my... I'm taking Kurt. But really, though... Um, he would have been happy to go. I know he would have been. There, there's more games. So... Static. Static. So then I had... I mean, in reality, we could talk as much shit about Kurt as we want right now because the odds of him listening an hour and 38 minutes into this podcast are pretty his low. His attention span is not that high. Yeah. I mean, we could just sit here yeah, and talk about that. But I'll say, for the Rice game, this past Saturday, I gave Ben my other ticket so he can give it to his friend Mary. And I, and I got no problem. With it. That's fine. We can all go to the game as a group. But then also Kate was there too. And so Kate wanted to go. And I was like, well, I have my student ticket. I also have this club ticket. Because I wasn't going to use my student ticket. I was just going to, you know, let it go to waste. So then I was like, that's fine. You know, Kate, you got my ticket. You all can all, you and all your friends can go to the club. That's fine. And I'll go, to, I'll go into the stadium. And so then I had my student ticket and I was ready to go in. But then I couldn't figure out how to load it onto my phone. And then I was like, ah, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to leave. And then as I was leaving, I ran to this girl and she's like, oh, hey, like, What's up? I was like, oh, hey, nice to see you. I haven't seen you in a minute. And then I started walking. She's like, come on, let's go. Let's go to the game. I was like, okay. So then I went with her. And then I, I basically snuck into the game because I like tried to show them my ticket. They're like, yeah, like you don't have it like, loaded onto your phone. I just showed them like the screen where you're supposed to load. It was like, I can't figure it out. And then they just kind of like, lost interest in me. So I just walked past them. And so I walked into the game. But it was you know obviously a 40. They really don't care. They re Yeah, they really. It's the students. Especially not that. It's the student section. They don't really care that much. So they just got like whatever. Yeah, but I had a good time. Yeah, I still haven't used my big ticket. Not once? No. That was the first time I used mine. So I couldn't go to the Louisiana game because I had COVID. And I couldn't go to the Rice game because I was way too drunk to make it to the stadium. 
Did you go to the tailgate? Yeah. I I had a lot of ranch waters. Remember, we were up at the. Park. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and that's I told, right. and I looked at you and I, everyone else, and I said, "These are dangerous." Yep. Yeah. They all made fun of you. We all made fun of you. Yeah. Um, and you, we almost left you behind too. I remember that. I remember. We were we were ready to leave, and you were just like chilling in your room or something. I think you were on the phone. Yeah, you were on the phone because you like you gave me this, and I was like, well, "Like we're leaving." And then I think Jackson went in there and convinced you to come. And then, all right. So we went as a group with the tailgate. I was fairly drunk. I think we all kind of were. But it was a good time. I don't think time was a factor at that point for me. I think that was uh, being a bit of a, a bit of a moment. Mm. Yeah. The, so I'm hoping, at least, that UT will play well against Tech so we don't have to be embarrassed as we leave the Big 12. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's honestly one of the funniest things I've seen all year. The SEC, Texas moving the SEC gets announced. Texas plays Arkansas. Gets slapped. And the only thing I saw all over social media, welcome to the SEC, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. It's one game. One game. One game. Do you think Card is going to get better? Do I think what? Do you think Hudson Card is going to get better? Yeah. I mean, it's inevitable. So. Yeah. I mean, I have, to, I have to look through it. But anyways, we should wrap this up. I'm sure you have something to get to, Jacob. I think you mentioned that to me earlier. You keep checking the time. Yeah, I have a PCT meeting. And I haven't been to one in like two years, so I should probably go to this one. Yeah, probably, you should probably go. Yeah, I told someone that I told Sam that I was gonna go. I was like, yeah. Try to be a little more involved this semester. Yeah, you should. What what do you what do you do in a typical PCT meeting? I mean, it's, I don't know if you know because you haven't been there in two years. It's been a while. But um it's literally just like a like a status meeting for this org that I'm in. But um <laughs> It's like, so I'm in, obviously I'm in Delt with him and then PCT is just a separate fraternity that I'm also in, but it's a good business fraternity when it comes. So that's like, you met Baylor and Aries, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. That's what they're in. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to be a pledge trainer, Bram. Good for you, man. I'm going to train these pledges. <laughs> and by that, I mean, help them grow and develop and become productive members of the McCombs community. Good. I'm excited for that. I actually like, I was looking at like through my Snapchat stories the other day. And one of my friends from high school posted a picture of one of my other friends from high school. They go to Arkansas and it just said pledge trainer Wheeler. I feel so bad for those pledges. <laughs> That's the pledge trainers like in actual fraternities. It's a risky position. It is. It definitely is. Cause if it goes down like ATO, you're Dunions. Didn't something happen with Pike? No. Something happened with ATO. I wouldn't be surprised if something happened with Pike, to be honest with you. No. I, mean, I don't know of anything myself. No, I think Pike's fine. Um, I think recently there haven't been any kind of scandals in terms of hazing because everyone is pretty cautious nowadays. I don't know if they're cautious. I think that the I think the hardcore guys just have tighter lips and then everyone else kind of got weeded out. That too. Because like... Dell has significantly lessened its shenanigans. Yeah, it's it's good fun times. So, I I have a question for both of y'all. Sure. I also have my own answer for it. What's the funniest thing that you've ever seen a pledge have to do? Mm. If y'all are allowed to say it, because I know there are some rules there. What? I'll answer. I know that. the funniest thing I've seen an active do. And his name is Kirk Cochran, Fort Worth Pascal. I. Can also attest. Were you were you there for his second and a half strike? <laughs> the funny thing is, there's actually I actually don't remember which event. Are we talking about one of one of one of the bonding events, or are we referring to? Uh, I was talking about the bonding event. So you know about okay. So you know the whole encompass. Oh, I was there for that. Okay. Yeah, and he's a moron for that. Yeah, like that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll happily tell Major off air. Yeah, we can talk. About, we can tell Major. Off air. Yes, it's okay. But the we'll tell them both because both are like strikingly similar incidents. Yeah, you remember him at a party? It was like the Halloween party. It was the Halloween party. So I was with. No, it was. I'm telling you, there was a that was a no, Halloween party, but there was another event very similar to that event that was at the Halloween party. I think it was just like yeah, it, it, it might have been, and he was crossed. I remember being in Ryan Lee's apartment over in Elmwood, and. I was just kind of babysitting him. I mean, he was blacked out from about two o'clock until whenever he woke up. Um, 
Yes, very striking moments. I think those uh, will forever be in my memories. All right, let's wrap this up so I can tell Major the story, and then we can. All right. It's been a good one. Then I can bounce. It's been a good one, boys. All right. It's been awesome.